Hey guys, it's Shadow Heat here. How's everyone doing today? So, this has not been a great week for 3 for 3 at all. It's been a pretty terrible week, in fact. First, we had the Halo Infinite T rating controversy resurface again after someone got banned for their map being too violent. But yesterday, things got worse when Microsoft laid off 10,000 employees across the whole company. Now, we knew these layoffs were coming. They've been talked about in the media before. But we had no idea the extent it would affect 343 specifically. So, the first major departure from 343 is Joe Staten. To be clear, Joe Staten was not laid off or fired or anything like that. He is instead returning to Xbox Publishing to, I think, resume his previous role there. He originally joined 343 to help see Halo Infinite through to its launch, and then stuck around for a couple seasons worth of content and updates, such as Forge and Co-op. But now he would no longer be working on that anymore. That actually wasn't as much of a shocker because he was originally just working at 343 temporarily. We just didn't know how temporary that would be. But Joe Staten isn't the only person leaving 343. Unfortunately, it's been reported that as many as up to 100 employees or more at 343 lost their jobs yesterday. I know Halo Infinite is already released now, and it's not entirely unusual for there to be job cuts after a major game launch, but Considering Halo Infinite is supposed to be a live service game, one that's arguably in pretty bad shape right now, you'd think cutting back on staff for the game is the last thing 343 needs right now. But it seems Microsoft doesn't share the studio's or the fans' concerns for the game. So all these other employees that got laid off, it was initially reported that it was, that number was around 60, but I've seen other reports claiming that that 60 are actually from the full-time staff at the studio. While many more people working there, the people who are working on contracts, uh, apparently had their contracts terminated early, which is where that additional number came from for that 100 estimate. But in any case, we don't really know the exact count of how many 343 employees had to leave the studio yesterday, and we may never know that. But it's not just the fact that so many were laid off that's concerning. I mean, it's a very terrible thing, but it's, it's also you know, what teams they were laid off from. So, it's been reported that a majority of the layoffs came up, came from the teams working on campaign or single-player content for Halo Infinite. If that's true, then that likely means we're probably never going to get any campaign DLC or expansions for Halo Infinite anymore. Maybe at least, you know, not anytime soon, if ever. But perhaps... You know, remember that rumored Halo the Endless DLC that people have been speculating about for a while now? Perhaps that may never see the light of day now. This actually brings to the question the future of Halo Infinite, as well as the future of the entire Halo franchise as a whole. You see, it's not that 3 for 3 is without leadership now, now that Joe Staten left, but I know a lot of fans were really hoping Joe Staten would be able to help revitalize the franchise and take it in a new direction under his vision. And, and there is a new head of 343 now, who hopefully has a you know bright future with the studio and a great vision. But now without Joe Staten, and really without much of the single player team, the future of Halo campaign and the direction it's going to go, the, the vision that people have had for it, it's just completely uncertain now. That's not supposed to be doom and gloom or anything like that. It's just that, you know, we don't know what's going to happen with the next Halo game now, or at least the next Halo story. From what we already know, Halo Infinite's development before its launch was turbulent, to say the least. And it most likely went through several resets, as well as direction changes, depending on whoever was the team lead at the time. I don't know what state Joe Staten left, you know, whatever project he was working on in, but if he was in the middle of some project, whoever replaces him could try to take the, the whole game in a different direction again. But that's all speculation anyways. For all we know, 343 might not have been working on any single player content for a while, and might not have had plans anytime soon anyways. So maybe that's why Joe Satan left, because he wasn't needed there anymore, there was nothing left for him to do. Either way, if all these reports are accurate, it does mean we probably won't expect any major new DLCs for Halo Infinite anytime soon, uh, if ever. So, you know, before Halo Infinite launched, if you remember, when it was revealed that so many things wouldn't be there at launch, like co-op, forge, playable leads, assassinations, and so on, I remember a lot of people defended the game launching like that. 
they justified it by saying things like it's a live service game with a 10 year plan so they'll they'll add those features eventually down the road you know plenty of time for that to happen or they would say things like those things are missing because halo infinite is using a brand new engine from the ground up that took years to make from scratch so they didn't have time to implement all those features but they will because of the whole 10 year plan i was optimistic at the time that the 10 year plan could actually result in some really cool new features and content getting added to infinite down the road maybe like even very quickly at the launch but you know i, I thought all right Halo is the flagship Xbox franchise, and Microsoft has very deep pockets, so maybe they could pull off everything people people want. However, I was also a bit concerned at the time that a 10-year plan could also mean 10 years of just weapon and armor skins, with the occasional new map or weapon or maybe vehicle here and there. And I'm beginning to really worry that that might be the case if they are indeed still planning on supporting Halo Infinite for the full 10 years uh, that some people claim you know before they move on to the next Halo game but at this point I don't think that 10-year plan thing is actually happening anymore however I I think it's also too soon to expect a new full Halo game anytime soon so my prediction for the Halo franchise in the near future probably a few more seasons on Halo Infinite before we start hearing about the next big Halo game or project or whatever. And as for those few more seasons in the meantime, I'm still predicting it'll mostly be just armor cores and uh, weapon and armor coatings with the occasional new weapon and map and vehicle here and there. I don't think we'll ever get playable leads or assassinations back for infinite at least, but these are all just my predictions and I would definitely love to be proved wrong. Of course. Anyways, Yesterday's news, yesterday in general, was a very sad day for everyone. It's really terrible that so many employees lost their jobs, and I, I hope they're all able to land on their feet very quickly and find another job elsewhere. As for Halo fans, to many, this is also going to seem like Microsoft kicking Halo while it's down. You know, rather than putting more resources into Halo Infinite to make it better, they're taking away resources and probably reducing the future potential this game had. But Microsoft's hiring policies and dependence on contract labor and all that, you know, causing issues for 343 3 and game development, that's a whole nother discussion for another day. However, it's abundantly clear that Microsoft really needs to give 343 3 more autonomy and not lock them into the same corporate structure and policies as the rest of Microsoft. I don't know, like, what the future holds for 343 3 and Halo. I've seen suggestions that it's time for 343 3 to become a publisher for the Halo IP, and get other studios to develop Halo games for them. That reminds me a lot of the late 90s and early 2000s when FASA Studios was acquired by Microsoft. And, you know, FASA was the premier game studio for Microsoft at the time, the flagship studio. And they were like that for a while, until eventually they just became a publisher too. And, you know, ultimately they were shut down shortly after the Xbox 360 launched. So I personally don't have a lot of confidence in that route with Microsoft. <laughs> Other suggestions I've seen is Microsoft should do what Activision does with Call of Duty, which is assign multiple studios to work on separate games for the franchise. I remember it was a common misconception for a long time that Call of Duty, uh, because Call of Duty had yearly releases, it was rushed and devs only get one year to make that game, when in reality each studio had the full three year cycle to work on their own Call of Duty game. So something like that would probably be better for Halo. 343 could continue to focus on mainline Halo games while other studios can make spin-offs. Those are just some of the ways Microsoft could possibly invest in the future of Halo to make sure it's successful and continues to be. So that wraps up for this video. This was very surprising and unfortunate news to hear, and the last thing Halo Infinite needs is, you know, more issues like this, as well as less resources to uh, continue its development. But this was entirely on Microsoft, really, uh, for for doing these massive layoffs, and it was completely out of 343's hands. So, what do you all think about this recent news? What, what do you think this reduction in staff at 343 is going to mean for the future of Halo Infinite, and really the Halo franchise as a whole? Do you think Halo still has a bright future, or is the road going to is the road about to get even bumpier? Let me know your thoughts on all this in the comments down below, and. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye, guys.